Well, uh, let's talk about some KPA basketball. So the KPA women's team, they advanced to 2-0. They beat Customs from Nigeria. And um, I mean, this is this was actually expected because I felt like uh, Customs was not, was not that team that can be able to like upset KPA like that, especially coming off that dominant win yesterday against CNSS. I was expecting KPA to just come out swinging, and they did. And they led in rebounds. Letting you know a uh, field goal percentage, they didn't shoot the greatest, especially when it came to three because they shot like you know 39% from the field. But on two point field goals, they're just able to like um just get those shots up. But one stat that was actually quite incredible that I that I liked was points in the paint because they're just able to like just get inside. And one thing that I've seen um happen, especially when a team just you know has high volume scoring in the paint is when that is taken away like you have to find a way to be able to like knock down the three ball which they are not able to do and when they find a team that can be able to knock down the three ball they really really struggle because they don't have clear defined three point shooters on the team so that's one drawback that will hurt KPS offense. Not every time you're going to be able to like get the <laughs> leeway to be able to like di- drive in and you know get inside. So unfortunately, that's one thing that I don't think that they have. I don't think that they have enough shooters on the team uh, because even the shooters that they have, they are so much other responsibilities. They're supposed to be able to cut to the basket. They are. <laughs> they have. I don't think they have even uh, actual play calls where they they get set up for like you know. Uh, pick and roll, pick and pop, sh- pick and pop shots. So that's one thing that I've looked at the film. And I don't think that the players are being called for plays like that. I don't think the coach does that. So yeah, has been. I've been. I've watched a lot of games to see. Like it's just you know. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it's just you know disrupt basketball. It's just like rec ball. And points from turnovers. You can see KPA in there with points from turnovers. Led in that start, and especially getting the bench involved. And one start that was actually quite glaring, even despite the win. I don't know why KPA cannot take care of the basketball. I've talked about um, the REG game against Equity in a previous video. And we saw a team that just knows how to take care of the damn basketball. And they know how to be able to, like, um, you know, score efficiently. So that's one thing that I've not seen from KPA. They have they've been averaging north of 20 turnovers per game, even despite, you know, the win... And even like having 21 assists and 13 steals, still like they can't be able to like take care of that basketball. They've had they had four blocks and also fouls. That's one thing that really don't get it. I don't really I really don't understand why they they have the need to like keep fouling a lot, and those fouls really cost the team as much. And heading into like even the box score, I was just expecting to see the usual suspects. <laughs> I was expecting the usual suspects to be able to like you know pull up their performances so and you could see Victoria Reynolds she played 32 minutes she only had an 8 minute breather in this game 21 points 52% shooting from the field so majority of the offensive load that KPA has I feel like she's delegated that role and majority of the time the scoring production the KPA team just feed the ball to her as many times as they can so that they can be able to score and that's the reason as to why you're seeing uh natalie she's not scoring as much but you can see she has eight assists in there so some of those assists just come from like you know just passing the ball to victoria because you can look at victoria she only has one assist so majority of the shots that she's getting they're just assisted or like catch or even like you know uh off the dribble threes so yeah, that's actually a good thing because she, putting her the number one option can really 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 helps the team be able to like you know have a fluid offense it's just more like a look at Doncic situation where you just feed the player that ball and make sure that you know they just play to their strengths especially in scoring because she i only trust her when she's scoring and also medina just clear clearing up when you know the misses are there she had nine rebounds she was one rebound shy from a double double and man and the other players oh and also um antoine bannister she played 14 minutes 12 points she was five or seven from the line and three of seven from the field and at least she made one three out of five attempts which was uh, which was actually quite good she sunk that three 
and looking at even like um, having the imports and also like the other players get involved in the game and also in the action as much as uh, there's a lot of playmaking coming from you know uh, the point guards or even like you know uh, uh, the forwards cleaning up the basketball there has to be a way that the team has to figure out how to be able to like you know score efficiently because you can see Victoria 9 of 17 she she saw, she shot 52 percent and I feel like majority of the time she's t- attempting too many shots and she's not as efficient as she could be because she could have been able to like if the ball if she was being placed in a situation where like there are sets being drawn for her she can average a, a higher field goal percentage even at the 60 percent because efficiency is actually something that is quite key especially when the offense is just zero down to you and also the other guards have to get involved i was expecting hilda to be able to like you know play well in this game but unfortunately uh, she had a dud game uh, she only had a five point game and i mean that's just about it you expect some production for some players uh, aminata she still not found her way to be able to play the game she only scored from the line she had she was 0 for 8 from the field i mean you're having just players with just crazy crazy start lines and crazy <laughs> uh, shooting splits so you're having selena here she had eight points you've got some players who oh my god they, they didn't even get minutes to be able to like even show like their production but one thing that i feel like um is not good and i don't like it when it happens is a player like playing heavy minutes i know uh some players have to score and some players have to defend but even if you're not showing up uh, scoring wise you're supposed to be able to be efficient in either looking for steals assisting you know blocking shots that's one thing that i've not seen from like majority of the players that play heavy minutes if you see the role that victoria reynolds has is actually specific she put there so that she, she can be able to like at least uh, be the focal point of the offense and just you know have the ball fed to her so that she can score so that's her main function but if you look at the other players they're just cleaning up after her and they're supposed to be covering for her especially defensively and trying to hide her flaws and i don't think like the kpa team are structured like that because i just find i just see a situation where they're trying to like you know every every player is trying to like find a way to be able to like score which is not bad but as working as a unit there has to be like a clear cut number one number two number three option so in this case there was only a number one option let's say for example the other team just shuts out victoria reynolds because at some point the equity not the equity at some point the kpa women's team are going to match up against a sporting and a sporting are very good especially on defense and also converting on mistakes and kpa really struggled last year and i covered it in a video and looking at this year this iteration of kpa if an elite team are able to figure out how to like stop victoria reynolds from like scoring the basketball who is a, who is going to step in and become like that player who's going to you know cover the load are we going to depend on antoine bannister because she's not like um i don't think like she has gotten into an in-game situation where she's going to be called upon as the number one option i don't think so or are you going to go and defer to like the guys that have already been there do you think madina can be that person because she throws away the ball and she's somewhat of a turnover machine <laughs> when when she in a, in a foul machine when she gets pressured a lot and her footwork is not as sound so who is going to be that person there so that's the big question because given like the way the roster is looking like and given like the responsibility of the coach like you know uh, assigns to the teams I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know even know who, who the best team does. Coach Ojuku know the best team that best team best lineup that he can put, especially when they need a back when they need a bucket. I'm not sure because when these things are not met, I mean, this is just going to be um, you're just going to have like an exit like the way we got last year. So um, yeah, just just uh, just to talk about that. Those are the only those things that I just uh, pay attention to because I'm a sports head. I just make sure to pay attention to that because if uh, those things are not you know uh, looked at unfortunately 
doesn't matter how many points she scores doesn't matter how many po- even she Victoria Reynolds can even score 30 and KP will still lose because no much structure especially in coming on offense and too many players who are very inefficient 3 of 10 2 of 5 you know <laughs> i mean 0 for 8 so it's 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 um it's not good like especially knocking down the three ball and when i look at like our three point percentage is actually quite a discouraging because it's not just about just chucking up threes because see you could see the best three point shooter on the team is victoria reynolds all the others natalie she's not a three point shooter she she has never been a three point shooter statistically and i don't think she should be she has no any business taking seven threes in a game hilda i'm not sure she she's very streaky she can get one she can miss all of them i mean antoine bannister i mean she this was her first game that she was actually you know uh, hitting those trying to hit those shots and try to get get like a rhythm to the game but nah she shouldn't have any business taking it through she should just stick to like scoring inside and just field goals or just make sure to just make you know use of the field goal instead of like going for the three if you can't shoot a three don't shoot a three I mean, Nata, she's trying, but unfortunately, she has not been able to get into the game, especially from yesterday, even today. So our three-point percentage is still lacking, and any team that has the ability to knock down the three and figure out that KPA can't knock down the three, this is the same case that, you know, plagues the Equity Hawks too, because I've covered them in a previous video. If this uh, same situation happens, they still they, they will still struggle. So... Yeah, man, those are just my opinion, and um, I, I just said, you know, let me just, you know, just do this uh, one real quick and just, you know, give my two cents on it, and uh, the Equity Hawks, they'll have a free, ga- free game day tomorrow, they're not going to play tomorrow, and the first game of the day is KPA versus this team, yeah, so I'll just be waiting to see that, and also I'll be waiting to see... The REG versus Aspar game. This is actually going to be actually quite awesome. I'm going to look at this or uh, Overdose uh, versus Interclub. Ah, these tomorrow's games are actually quite good. So I'm just going to make sure to check those out as well. But hey, I mean, I just hope KP are able to go um, three and zero tomorrow. As we wait, as we wait for them to match up against a Sporting on Friday, which is going to be fireworks. I'm expecting that. And uh, yeah, man, without further ado, please be sure, you know, follow me on NBA Kenya if you're watching this on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure, you know, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so, so that you get notified when I post. And um, I'm out. Peace.